I'm Garth Funston, I'm a GP and a clinical senior lecturer in primary care cancer research at Queen Mary University of London. We studied CA125 within primary care. We used anonymised data from England from over 50,000 women to look at how accurate a test it was for ovarian cancer and how useful a test it was. CA125, a widely used test but had never before been studied within primary care. This research helps us understand um, how it performs, how useful it is and how we can use it to best effect within primary care. Um, CA125 blood test is a really important marker. It's not specific, uh, but it is sensitive for ovarian cancer. So if you have somebody that has the symptoms that are associated with um, ovarian cancer, it's really important to consider using CA125 as one of your blood tests um, in part of your diagnostic workup. CA125 is not a perfect test, but is a pretty accurate test for ovarian cancer within the primary care setting. It's got a sensitivity of 85% for invasive ovarian cancer within primary care. Um, and to put that in context, that's more sensitive than, say, chest x-ray for lung cancer and a bit less sensitive than a fit test for colorectal cancer in symptomatic patients. If a woman has symptoms of possible ovarian cancer, I strongly recommend performing a CA125 test, particularly in women over the age of 50. We find that it was more accurate in older women, so women over 50, um, than in younger women. If CA125 was, was high above the threshold um, of 35 units per ml, um, women had a, had a really high risk of having ovarian cancer. So one in 10 women with the CA125 above that level was diagnosed with an ovarian cancer. And that was higher in, in women over 50, so it was one in seven women over 50 was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer may be subtle, but if you go looking for it, the signs are definitely there. I mean, you must have seen people at stage one um, who've had symptoms. I think there used to be, be a thought that symptoms were only really present in, in later stage ovarian cancer, but actually there's been lots of research come out over the years, some showing that you know similar rates of symptom reporting in early stage cancer. So I think I think that myth is should be busted. Yeah. Women can present with symptoms in early stage cancer and that's key. It's really important to recognise that. The thing I was really interested in is your research on the reliability of CA125 because I think as GPs we tend to be a bit reticent about it and think, you know, is it is it a really useful test or is it not that viable? So that's the bit I was really interested in. The work shows that in general practice, as a first line test for ovarian cancer, it's a reasonably accurate test and a really useful triage test. It picks up you know, the majority of women who've got invasive ovarian cancer and that's really important. In a way, it's been good, my diagnosis of ovarian cancer. It's made so many more women within my circle aware of the symptoms of ovarian cancer and I hope that they're passing those messages on. CA125 is such a simple test to take, it's a simple blood test um, that can be taken at GP surgery and it's important because it actually can detect ovarian cancer. For me it was inconclusive but then that is probably a high because ever since I had that 34 it went up straight after surgery which again is a normal thing to happen. Um, but that it went down very quickly and now my CA125 is 5, which is normal for me. So 35 was high for me. How do you handle that if a woman comes in with symptoms of possible ovarian cancer and they're a bit younger? It's a challenge. It's really difficult, isn't it? And, and I think this is where it's so important to remember that CA125, even though your research is saying that it's a lot more accurate than we thought it was before, it's just part of the jigsaw. And so it's important to go looking and do a transvaginal scan I did ask her at that scan if she thought what she saw looked like cancer and she said yes it did and at the time I thought that was quite brutal but she was obviously very expert at what she does and I've thanked her since because she was so honest it actually planted a seed in my, my head so by the time I got my diagnosis I feel that helped me deal with it better because it was something that was already planted and I was preparing myself. I always warn women what a transvaginal scan is because otherwise you, you just don't know what they're going to expect. You know, when they go along to the ultrasound and then they're told that they've got a probe that's going internally or whatever, I mean, that is quite distressing for some women, so I always try and warn them of that. 
if I'm really suspicious about somebody and, and I think, I don't know what to do here, I think we need to remember in primary care that we, again, we are part of a jigsaw as well. And we've got colleagues in secondary care, we've got specialists in ovarian cancer that we can get on the phone and ask. We can send them advice and guidance or we can even refer somebody to a cancer of unknown primary clinic that's now opening up around the country. Now, a really striking finding from this research was when we looked at other cancers. Um, we found that in women over 50 uh, who had a high CA125 but didn't have ovarian cancer, there was a really high uh, rate of diagnosis of other cancers, um, things like uh, bowel cancer, pancreatic cancer and lung cancer. And in women over 50, one in five women with a high CA125 but no ovarian cancer was diagnosed with one of these other types of cancer. So being aware of that, recognising that and investigating these women for these uh, other cancers is really important. Because it's not specific, it can be a little bit awkward because it can be positive in other conditions such as bowel cancer and endometrial cancer. Unfortunately, you can get false positives and you can get false negatives with CA125. So it's a really important tool, but the important thing is to remember it's only part of the jigsaw that makes you um, think about ovarian cancer and helps you diagnose it. The main symptoms of ovarian cancer came out really as part of the NICE guidance in, in 2011. They were looking at uh, retrospective studies which which um, came up with the women saying very, very strongly what their symptoms were before they were diagnosed. And as part of that, they came up with four main symptoms. So you've got bloating, you've got early satiety, so feeling full up when you eat a meal, you've got abdominal pain, and you've got urinary frequency. So those were the top four. They also identified that you've got a change in bowel habit, extreme fatigue, and uh, weight loss. So the last three are very important, and that should certainly be uh, giving you the red flags that you would need to diagnose any form of cancer. But the first four that I mentioned are very specific. So your, your pain, your bloating, your urinary symptoms, and you're feeling full up. So initially, um, I started having some discomfort in my stomach um, following a holiday. Um, and it started with um, acid reflux. So I just went along to the GP, he gave me some antacids. I took them for a week or so, it didn't make any difference. Um, and then I went back to the GP again, um, telling him that as well as the acid reflux, I was also getting some discomfort in my stomach. It felt inflamed and it felt warm in a funny way. Um, so the GP said he didn't think there was anything wrong with me. Um, and just to carry on taking the antacid tablets, he thought it could be IBS. Irritable bowel syndrome is just not something that presents for the first time in a woman over 50. So if you're thinking about diagnosing somebody for the first time over 50, please think twice because you, it's very likely that you'll be doing a misdiagnosis and um, I would strongly urge you to consider ovarian cancer in those situations. So many people think, you know, at stage four, of course, you're going to get an abdominal mass and therefore it will give you um, abdominal pain. But actually what they don't realise is that the marker that's released by ovarian cancer cells um, causes peritoneal irritation. So, of course, peritoneal covers you from the top down to the bottom. You know, you could get symptoms anywhere in your abdomen. And I think that's really important for GPs to, to know about because I don't think that information is out there and it's really sad. Absolutely. So what would you do if you've got a woman that's presented with ovarian cancer symptoms? What, what tests do you tend to go for first? CA125 is my, my first line test in women with symptoms of possible ovarian cancer. I may add in other tests if, if the symptoms are unclear, um, so potentially other tests such as FIT and a full blood count as well, but CA125 definitely part of my workup. Platelets are always useful, aren't they? Because obviously if they go up, then you've got an independent marker for cancer anyway, so I always, I always do a full blood count. And the other ones I tend to do are CRP and ESR because obviously it's an inflammatory marker and I think sometimes we forget that and, and part of the differential is if we get in raised inflammatory markers we need to take that in context with the CA125 as well. If somebody, a woman comes back to me and says that they've got persistent symptoms, it's really important to take them, take them seriously and not just think, oh well their, their test was normal last time. you need to do another test after the initial one and see if there's a rise. If there is a rise, then you really should be going looking for ovarian cancer. I went for an external scan which came back showing that everything was absolutely normal. They couldn't see any, any concerns or inflammation anywhere. So after about my third or fourth trip to the GP in the space of end of August to November, my GP finally said to me there was nothing wrong with me because he drilled out uh, gallstones, he drilled out IBS, and just thought it was symptoms of the menopause. 
um, and told me to just, it would go away and, that, and I was absolutely fine and the scan had shown nothing. Don't forget, you've always got, as a GP, you've always got a second opinion. You can always do advice and guidance. Um, there's also other systems around the country, such as Consultant Connect, so that you can actually speak to a consultant gynaecologist and say, look, I've got this woman, okay, her CA125 isn't indicating that she might have ovarian cancer, but she has very strong symptoms um, of ovarian cancer and I'm concerned about her. What would you do next? And that's perfectly reasonable to ask us uh, for a second opinion at any point. Once you actually know that there's something like that inside you, or the potential of something like that, you just want it out. You don't want to wait, you don't want to wait a second. I was ready to cancel everything and just have the surgery next day, but it wasn't possible. There's, this is a really active field, thankfully, and there's lots of research going on. CA125s, um, as I said, are a reasonably good test, but if we can improve how we pick up these cancers, there's real potential for improving outcomes for women. If women are coming to see you with abdominal pain, bloating, feeling full up and urinary frequency, it's really important to do CA125. It's simple, it comes back to you within 48 hours and it can give a huge advantage when you're trying to diagnose ovarian cancer quickly and easily.